Hello and welcome back to my channel, or just welcome if you're new. Either way, I'm glad you're here. Welcome to part 2 of my Jujutsu Kaisen Angel series. If you want some background info about this series and my intention with it, I recommend you watch part 1 where I'm drawing Satoru Gojo. I promise you, it's worth your time. So, who am I drawing now? In this video, I'll be working on Megumi Fushiguro and his shadow dogs. In case you didn't watch the show, Megumi is pretty much the emo side character. The sad one in the trio. Uh, the Sasuke of the show, though he's actually a much better person. Megumi can summon shadow animals who help him fight demons. In the beginning of the show, he was mainly using his two shadow dogs, one black and the other white. I really like the idea of playing around with the contrast of black and white. You'll see how it turned out in the end. Instead of the usual angel wing with the million feathers, I decided to go for sort of a broken bat wing made of dripping shadows. I swear, I swear to god I did not do it just to save time, no, there's an intention behind it. By his side are his two dogs, the black one in the background like a cast shadow, and the white one in the front, creeping into the frame. I wanted the shadows to not only be shadows, but also like, liquid, if that makes sense. You know, like Sai from Naruto and his ink creatures? Something like that. Like, I wanted the shadow to kind of be dripping, like if it's sort of a material coming out of another realm. And that's pretty much where the wings come from. I didn't really feel like the feathers match uh, Megumi and don't really match his vibe. I wanted them to be like kind of a creepy shadow realm being, like coming out, being summoned by his like shadow technique. Composition-wise, I wanted it to be very dynamic, but at the same time still very balanced. So I was quite careful with where I'm putting the white parts and where I'm putting the dark parts. I really wanted to create sort of a balance, to not have everything on one side and then... Uh, like, I didn't want to have all the, um, all the dark elements of this drawing to be like on one side and all the white ones on the other. Like, that's a bit unbalanced and also very hard to draw. I wanted it to be um, balance. <laughs> I wanted there to be like some kind of equality uh, when it comes to values in the overall big picture. And I chose this pose and this exact kind of location of elements because I wanted them to look like they're jumping into action. Like the character just summoned his dogs and he spread his wings and now they're about to go fight some demons. Like I wanted it, it to have sort of a dynamic, not necessarily that they're in action right now, but they're about to jump into action. I'd like to take a moment and talk a little bit about the process and the materials I'm using since I couldn't really do it in the previous video. For this series I'm experimenting with the combination of graphite and charcoal in one drawing. Usually I use them separately because they have some differences in appearance. The reason why I decided to combine them though is that exact difference. Graphite is a bit shiny which can be a great quality, but if you lay too dark on the paper it pretty much becomes a mirror. It just reflects the light in all directions, reflects everything. It's great if that's what you're looking for, but I find it a bit annoying. Photographing such works is a nightmare and honestly even looking at them isn't always the best. Charcoal on the other hand isn't shiny at all and when you lay, it, lay a thick layer of it it's just like a pit of black. But the downside of charcoal is that I find it a bit harder to use. It's not as precise and just in, in my experience it is just a bit more difficult to use than graphite. A lot of my drawings have a very high contrast and I often go super dark with my pencil so yeah the shine of graphite is annoying. So why not use them together and combine the best of both mediums? 
The process is pretty simple. I use graphite for the light parts and the thin lines and then add charcoal to the parts that are super dark. This way I reach my desired contrast and my desired precision and realism, but I don't get the annoying shine. I'm still experimenting with this method so it doesn't always turn out perfect, but so far I think I'm figuring it out pretty well. Actually, looking back at my footage, I can't help but think that it, it's really... It's time to make a tutorial on clouds. I did one with watercolors, but it's time to do like a graphite clouds tutorial because I think they look pretty good and I can probably give some tips. Yeah, it's time to make that video. So if you want to know how I do my clouds, uh, please comment below. And now, as usual, because my videos are actually pretty long and I find it kind of hard to talk for 20 minutes because I ran out of topics, I will shut up and you guys just enjoy the time lapse. See you later!
So, if I'm being completely honest, I absolutely love the way the dogs turned out. They are amazing. I wasn't sure what I'm doing because I don't typically draw animals, but the fur turned out so great. It is very, like, almost soft looking. I can, I can almost touch it, I feel like. Uh, the character, on the other hand, actually turned out much worse. To be honest, I think so far it's one of my worst paint uh, drawings of this series. I don't really like his face and I feel like he turned out a bit too lanky. Like, I don't know, there's something really off about him to me. Um, but maybe you like it? I don't know, give me your opinions, please. Personally, like, I feel like I could do better, honestly. And if I have the time, I would absolutely draw him again just to, to like, be fully satisfied. Um, if we go back to positives, I love how the wings turned out. I was really afraid that I'm gonna lose that contrast I was looking for, but it turned out really good. I have to spray it midway with my workable fixative, so I don't smudge everything while I do like the darkest wings. And that was a great idea, because oh my god, that was kind of difficult. But it turned out great. It genuinely looks like they're made of slime, <laughs> which is exactly what I wanted. So yeah, overall, overall, like it's not my best, but it's not terrible. I there are some really good parts, and there are some parts that are uh, a bit meh. Like I would rate this a six out of ten. I think it's a six. It's not terrible, but it could be better. I did a showdown video, but I had to redo the entire leg of the white dog because turns out I, I, um, uh, I messed up. I, I messed up the dog anatomy, uh, but I fixed it and it looked good. And I absolutely love the shadow under all of them. I think it looks amazing that it's like just it's a shadow, but it's also like a spill of dark ink almost, dark matter, and it's dripping. Ah, so good. I love it. Well, I guess now that I am done simping for my character, uh, I think I'll just finish this video. Thank you so much for watching, I really appreciate it. Please give this video a like. As I said in the previous video, likes keep me motivated and I have a tendency to burn out. So, if you want me to stay motivated, if you want to see more of these drawings, Give this video a like, maybe leave a comment, tell me what you like about this, what you don't. Let's talk about Naruto. I don't know, talk about anything. I read comments and I absolutely love seeing what you guys think about my art. Hit the subscribe button if you want to see more videos. And also check out the description where I linked all my socials. I recommend you follow my Instagram where I am most active and I post everything I'm working on. You should also check out my Twitch channel, which I am reviving after a way too long break, and I'm also doing there some really cool stuff. If you're interested, you should check out my Patreon and my Etsy shop. Uh, I am actually thinking about adding some more stuff to my Etsy shop very soon. I just have to, like, actually get to it. And I will see you next time. Stay happy. Goodbye.